We'll start in just a couple of minutes. Let the stragglers come in, including me because I was late. This gives new meaning to the term scat singing, I think. Hi, Chris. Let me know where you're signing in from. You know, if you hold your device vertically instead of horizontally, if you hold it vertically and swipe left, just like on Tinder, you can see the comments and even make them as they go by, unless you're on your laptop, in which case you just have to click on the image and it'll pop up a bigger window with the comments running down the side. It's just pre-show music. Hi, Don. Hey, Thomas. Catherine Puma's watching. There is more than that. That's enough of that. All right, well, listen, thank you, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I'm really winging it today, I'll tell you what. This is strictly winging it. Let's start outside, what do you say? Just a little shop tour today. Here's outside. Aside from the extreme emptiness of the parking lot here, you'd probably never guess that what's going on is what's going on. But there it is, how about that? Right. And here's the, uh, here's walking up to the front of Mighty Fine Guitars. Hello. There's the front door. This over here is the shipping department. Heads will roll, that's a mess. And here is uh, coming into the shop. What do you think about that? Let me, I'm still figuring out this uh, camera situation here, as you can tell. Hey, there we go. Let's take a look around. This is the, hi Rory, cool. There's my old partner Rory McNamara, great, great singer, man. If you don't know Rory McNamara, tune him in. Check out his Facebook crawl because there's all kinds of cool stuff going on over there. Great, great singer and songwriter and uh, a worthy watch if you're looking for things to watch. Shut the door against all of those damn birds making all that racket out there. And I've got to re-familiarize myself with what's going on here myself. This is the water cooler. This is where all of the gossip happens. I walk over here sometimes and talk to myself and catch up on all the news. Here's a guitar by, um, this one is by a gentleman named John DeLapp. Wonderful, wonderful builder up in the Davis uh, near Sacramento area. Here's another one from up that away. This is, uh, this is called a Via Cali, Via Cali by a fellow named Sang Byun. Then we got some Frank Trunk Halley. We got um, a couple of his fantastic guitars. Check this out. Holy smokes. Hi, Patrick. Hi, John. Hello, all y'all. I'm gonna tune into the, uh, to the, um, to the notes here momentarily. But uh, yeah, it is nice and warm here, Dan, sure is. Look at this, just remarkable workmanship and really radical stuff going on inside there. Let me put down the iPad here for a second. You can't see it on this guitar, but what's going on inside? Instead of a big X brace cutting through the guitar like that, this guitar has parabolic braces that loop through the guitar like this. This one, I believe, has seven of these parabolic braces that loop through this, pinless, this uh, wingless rather bridge and pinless as well. 
really radical and a great sounding guitar with magnetic armrest to keep your arm off the off the top from dulling down the top. Lots of people use that. I think Richard Thompson is one of the prime purveyors who used to be, at least of that technique. And another John Delap, good heavens, he's everywhere and he's fabulous and he's inexpensive in this shop too, by this shop standards, of course. Um, here's, a, uh, here's one uh, that's called uh, the Queen City Guitar Company. There it is. A fellow named Aaron builds these. He's doing his own thing. He's not doing anything kind of like Martin or kind of like Gibson or anything. He's doing his own thing. As is this gentleman over here. This is, uh, this is a remarkable guy up in Willits, uh, Rick Micheletti, and uh, remarkable. This body bevel that you see around the edge here, this body bevel is not just for looks. That is strictly structural. And uh, he's kind of floated the top and the back inside that, those two frames, front and back. And he jokes, he says, you know, whenever I went to, uh, to the Healdsburg Guitar Festival, all the other builders said, you're doing everything the hard way. Why are you doing everything the hard way? The way you join things is difficult. This headstock is difficult. Individual br saddles on the bridge are difficult. How about that? Kind of trippy. Hi there, folks that are just checking in. Stevie Coyle here. I'm kind of shouting because I think I have to shout around to the front side microphone here. Just doing a little shop tour today. There's another Via Cali. Wonderful guitars by Sang Byun. Down the way there, we got a Husson Dalton, another fellow. I don't know what's going on up in the Sacramento Davis area and kind of up that way, all the way over towards Napa. But this fella is John Datlin from American Canyon. I don't know if it's something in the water up there or what, but there's lots of great builders up there. You know what? I have a feeling I'm getting behind on uh, questions and comments. So give me a second here. I'll, I'll pan around the shop a little bit for you and see what I'm missing here. If you've got any comments and questions, fire away. I'll answer best I can. I'm kind of <laughs> reacquainting myself with the shop after quite a while, of course. Over this way is the, uh, I've got just a couple of, of nylon strung guitars. Both of these are made by a fella down in San Jose, Kohei Fuji. Kohei Fuji was, uh, is, is kind of doing his own thing as well. Really unusual crossover guitars with, uh, you can sort of see perhaps on this one, back bracing in there. Bracing on the back and wonderful, kind of snappy sounding. I'm sort of accustomed to playing lots and lots over the years of kind of low and mid-range classical guitars that sounded spongy to me. Well, these ones have a lot of snap to them. Pardon me, I'm gonna sneeze, I hope. Achoo. Come on now. You can do it. <coughs> oh. Ah, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Well, let's get back to where we were here. There we are. Pardon me. Did I get you? Hey, there's John DeLapp himself. Hey, John, we we're just talking about your guitars. And we'll talk about them some more because there are more on the far end of the shop here. This is, uh, this over here that we were just looking at, let me pan around to it again, is what, uh, what I've called the Wall of Small. These are the fairly small guitars. Couch cuddlers. Oh, this, oh my gosh. Gesturing here, I remember Soupy Sales? Ule, ule, ule. White Fang and Black Tooth. You Los Angelinos perhaps would recall that. Um, this is the Wall of Small, kind of smaller guitars. In fact, let me get a, a kind of a better shot of that from across the room. These are guitars that you can play sitting on the couch. Let's face it, a lot of us these days are playing a lot of guitar, sitting on the couch, just kind of hanging out. And the dreadnoughts that we all grew up with are kind of awfully big for that. Not only are they, well, this is perhaps a good opportunity to go over to the big wall. Here's the wall of bigness. A classic dreadnought body like this, it's not only wide across the lower bout, it's wide across the waist. So it sits up really high in your lap and makes it a little bit difficult for some of us to play. Hey, Frank, Frank Giovanni, great blues player. Wow. John Green, fabulous photographer. Boy, all the stars are here today. So here I've got a bunch of dreadnoughts and big bodied guitars. There's a good all. 
There's a Carmel guitar. There's a Bill Tippin, a slope-shouldered dreadnought. Back up a little bit and get a slightly bigger picture of some of these guitars for you. Down here is a Michaud. There's a good old Gibson right in the middle there, lurking underneath all of this high figure and mother of pearl is actually a really nice J45. And over there's another good all with the tone right on it, getting buzzed. Here's a cop guitar, very Gibson-y. This is a fellow that worked in the Gibson shop, beautiful thing. And I've got another dreadnought coming in pretty soon by Peter Rodman. Another fella up there in the, uh, in the Davis Vortex who builds uh, very Gibson-y tributes to Gibson guitars. And we'll be having one of his guitars coming in real soon here. Now this wall here is pretty much, as I recall, because it's been a while, is mostly all triple O's and OM's. The triple O and the OM are the same body size, but the, in the classic configuration, the triple O has... Um, short scale, the OM has long scale, the triple O has a narrow fingerboard, one and 11 sixteenths, and an OM has a wide fingerboard at one and three quarters. Hey, Danny Click, whoa, another fearsome guitarist. This is great. Hi, Larry Pattis, finger style monster. Good heavens. Let me get back to my iPad here and see if there are any questions or comments or muttered threats. No, nothing so far, huh? Do you know, those of you watching on devices, if you want to participate in the conversation, uh, tip your device upright. If you're looking on an iPad, make it go vertical, and you'll see a little indication down at the bottom there that you can swipe to the left to get in on the conversation. Feel free to do that. It's just like Tinder. Sweep left if you like it. Triple O's galore on this wall, including some real rock stars. Um, DeLapp, I've got two of John DeLapp's guitars here. Look at this, and remarkably inexpensive for what they are. Huge value, arguably with one of the best values in the shop, really. And of course, this is not a triple O, but I needed a place to put it. That's a fellow named Seth Janofsky. You know, I'm gonna try a little experiment here, kids. Tell me if this screws up your picture terribly. I'm gonna shift over to vertical format, which is probably better for looking at no, I guess I can't do that. Sorry about that. Bad idea. Never mind. But that's uh, a fellow over in Alameda called Seth Janofsky building beautiful arch-top guitars. We've got Michael Propsom represented here. We've got Martin guitars. We've got Goodall. We've got Alan Perlman. I'm a Perlman man myself. There's Kevin Corcoran over there. Remarkable guitars everywhere you look. Another John DeLapp, one in Brazilian and one in not Brazilian, and uh, doggone. It's really quite remarkable to come into this shop after having been out for over a month, essentially, to see what all is going on in here. There's another good all. This is good. It was for a while there until I sold a couple of them, kind of the breed love nook. And uh, this here breed love right here is a guitar that I fell in love with my own self at Griffin Stringed Instruments 20 years ago. You can see here, I'll, I'll push in on this. See, it's got a spider inlaid there. Are you hearing nothing but mumbles, Mark David Hamilton? Am I not speaking clearly enough? Here's, uh, oh, this guitar. The reason this was the Nam show-off guitar that year, this was 2001, perhaps, and this was the guitar that, uh, that Breedlove showed off at Nam. They put it out front and put sexy spotlights on it and all the rest. And the reason they put a... I hope I can show this with limited arm space. The reason they put that, that spider on the front is because there's a spider, essentially, on the back here. I hope you can see it. Yeah, you can probably see it there. See it in the wood grain? Totally cool guitar. I fell in love with this guitar, like I said, all those years ago. And when I was putting the shop together, a gentleman I know who has lots and lots of guitars and has stocked me up on lots of guitars for a long time 
said, oh, you like Breedlove guitars. Well, uh, when did you fall in love with Breedlove? I said, boy, you know, there was one 20 years ago that I fell in love with, and it had a spider inlaid on it. And he said, oh, you mean, uh, fumble, fumble, this one? And he pulled it out of the closet. He had it. And it's here in the shop. Well, here we're kind of sweeping by Mission Control. Normally I've got my ass welded to that chair for hours at a time, but uh, hello, chair. Haven't seen you in a while. Hi, Rich LaPena, all the way from Florida, cool. Top right on the slim waist wall, please. Top right, okay, Doug, which one? Top right, this cutaway here, is that the one you were talking about? That's a Tony Yamamoto, great builder, I miss him. He just moved back to Japan a few months ago. I sure do miss him. Paulonia, top and sides on that one. Hi, Bob Steiner. Mike Tatarakis. Hey there. Here's an old Martin from uh, 1949. How about that? This one is one of the early guys who started building tributes to, um, excuse me, started building tributes to OMs back in the 80s. And, uh, he calls his guitars Franklin guitars, but his name is uh, Kukic, Nick Kukic, and a beautiful thing. This is probably, I gotta spin this one around for you, just cause. It's got perhaps the most beautiful Brazilian on the back that I've seen in a long, long time. Look at that, astounding. Straight grain, quarter sawn, primo stuff. Primo price, of course, as well. For you, $8,999. Well, let's press on here. This zone over here is where I have, usually have more, but I've sold a couple of these recently. These, uh, these lovely travel guitars by Journey. That's carbon fiber. The neck pops off completely. The strings stay on so that when you put the neck back on, it actually, the whole thing is in tune, which is spooky and weird. Demons is the only explanation, I think. And uh, it all fits in that there case, which you can sling in the overhead compartment. You can leave out the backpack straps the way it's configured right now, or you can tuck them in. Hey, Colleen Brown. Hey, there's one of the Wranglers right there, right on. And no, I'm not a mason. I just, I just have the fez. Here's some mandolins and a mandola. Here's David Dart, beautiful F style. There's Milton McClaskey, built under the name M. David. And here's a mandola by Maori. Hey, Kay. There's Kay Tittle. Very good. And Bob Oswald. Hey there. Local folks. Terrific. Another John DeLapp. The John DeLapp guitars in here, folks, a lot of them are on sale for $2,900, which in this shop is a screaming deal. So let's talk about that. I should point out that, yes, I am selling guitars and shipping them out. We don't do any business right here in the shop, but I do send them out. And if uh, the people love them, they keep them. If they don't, they ship them back after a couple of days, actually a couple of days of waiting for the, any microbes to die off. Then they open it and play it, see if they love it. If it's true love, they keep it. If they don't, I send back the check or refund the credit card moolah. It all can work. I'm doing a, doing a bunch of shipping these days. So talk to me. Here's a Collings. I was a Collings man myself for many years when I played with uh, Menudo. Great guitars, really great company out of Austin, Texas. There's Randy Kramer, Sparky Kramer, holy smokes, gorgeous thing. There's another Tony Yamamoto back there and a Peter Rodman. Check out the website, folks. I'm updating it daily. There's lots and lots of new stuff that came in just before everybody closed up. And more stuff is going up on the website all the time. As you'd expect, MightyFineGuitars.com. Just that, just that complicated. There's a real old Gibson from, there's an L1 from 1918. 
Here's a little old Martin from 1931, I believe. Do, do I remember this correctly? Perhaps not. Let's see. 1938, my mistake. Started off life as a Hawaiian guitar, played lap style, and was converted by the Martin Company and its owner at the time into a Spanish style guitar. And where, the, uh, where it all happens is right here in the middle. You know, folks can sit around and do a little jamming and whatnot. Kind of lonely right now, but soon enough, we'll be back, back, back up and rocking. And I'm sure I'm way behind on comments and questions here. Let me move over here and take a look at what all is happening. Hey, Tony. Hey, Colleen. Tony says, I got the most beautiful Yamamoto ever made last year right before he moved away. Excellent, right. Tony, great, great builder. Second good all you have there looks like a parlor I have, minus Macassar, Ebony, and Eng Engelman. Second good all. Ah, there are several. I wonder which one you mean, Don. I should have been paying more attention. My apologies. Well, that's what I wanted to show you today, folks. Rather than doing any plan for you, just wanted to, <laughs> as much as anything, <coughs> excuse me, wanted to reacquaint myself with my shop because it's been a while. Everything is still here. It's kind of a museum vibe at the moment, but uh, soon enough, we'll have people back in here. But in the meantime, do let me know if I can ship you one of these guitars and do keep an eye on the website because like I say, more stuff is going up there every day. Flat topic guitars mostly, a couple of nylon strung guitars and a couple of... Um, a couple of fabulous arch tops. And there it is. If you've got any comments or questions, fire them at me. Otherwise, I'll toddle along and leave you to the rest of your day. There's lots of great people playing online. Check it out. Oh, <clears throat> speaking of online, thanks for the reminder, Stevie. I'll be playing tonight on a platform called stageit.com. S-T-A-G-E-I-T.com. And 350 gets you in the door, but you got to go over there and buy some of their script beforehand. Just a little half-hour shows. They're tons of fun. Bonnie Raitt performs there. John Bon Jovi, Rick Springfield, all those heavyweights, and me. So if you've not been to the shop, here's a little tour for you. If you have been to the shop, perhaps this will jostle your memory about a guitar that you fell in love with. But let slip by for the moment. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, Lee. Thank you, David. Wood tones are beautiful, aren't they? You know, and I got a special treat today. I'll finish up with this thought. I got a special treat today. People often walk into the shop and say, oh, it smells so good in here. And I don't smell it. I didn't smell it, but I've been away from the shop for so long now. It does smell like roses in here. And that's why they call rosewood rosewood is because it smells like that. Just wonderful. All right, folks. Wish to see the headstock. The headstock of which guitar? Doug, was that, was that the Yamamoto over here? This is the one on the upper left. And I'm not sure I can even reach that high. That's the Tony Yamamoto headstock. Is that the one you wanted to see, Doug? I know Michael McGrath. I love them all too. Sometimes it's a real heartbreaker. It's always lovely to sell a guitar and it's always great, especially when a guitar is a great match for somebody. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. This always cracks me up. Maybe you'll get a giggle out of it as well. This is the room that I was gonna use for doing guitar lessons. And I'd kind of forgotten somehow that guitars have cases and that the cases are bigger than the guitars. Needless to say, it is not being used for guitar lessons. Oh, and speaking of guitar lessons, yes, I am giving guitar lessons online. Yes, I do take beginners. I love working with beginners. You folks, you beginners out there, uh, really make bigger jumps and faster than more advanced players, and I love being around for that. But uh, finger style is a specialty, but to a certain point, I can teach almost all styles. So hit me up, stevie at steviecoil.com. 
or stevie at mightyfineguitars.com. There's something a little bit funky about that web, uh, that, uh, web address right now, rather with that email address, stevie at mightyfineguitars.com. Some people are getting bounces. If you get bounced, send it one more time. That usually comes through. Doug, you're asking, what is maple? Uh, this guitar is not maple. This guitar is Paulonia all the way around. It looks like maple, but that's Paulonia. That is a uh, Malaysian wood, very fast growing, that the Japanese folks call kiri. And in some traditional Japanese societies, uh, they, they plant one of those trees when a girl baby is born. And then when she gets married 20, 30 years later, they chop down that tree and build her first batch of furniture out of it. Kind of romantic. Here's another Yamamoto in Paulonia all the way around. Wonderful sounding wood. Cases can have a great smell. <laughs> Sometimes the case comes in f like the guitar case for the 1949 Martin over there right there. That guitar case smells like 1949, whatever that means. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'll answer questions on the crawl once we sign off here. Anything I've missed, thanks for tuning in. I do this every Friday at noon, either from my house, from the secret subterranean lair here in suburban Lafayette, California, or here more and more frequently, I'll be back here at the shop because I'm the only person that's been in here for a month. And uh, any microbes that are in there are my own. Alrighty, thanks a lot, kids. Hope to see you tonight on stageit.com. I'll be playing there at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. to uh, help accommodate those folks on the East Coast who go to bed at uh, Grandpa O'Clock and don't like staying up past much past 9 o'clock. So 6 o'clock Pacific time, I'll be over on the Stage It site. Tomorrow at noon Pacific time, I will be on the Peghead Nation Facebook crawl answering questions about my fingerstyle course over there. So that's plenty about me. Tell me what you're up to. Stay safe. I look forward to seeing you down the road. Here comes an abrupt end to our, to our little tour of the shop. <laughs>